Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book, The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. This is her first adult novel that she wrote uh, a few years after the Harry Potter series came out. And uh, it, ironically, this is a political novel. And J.K. Rowling is a very uh, controversial author right now because of her some of her political beliefs, especially in the social sphere. I'm not going to be talking about any of that in this video. I'm going to be talking about the book and the politics discussed in the book. And so, um, uh, for those of you who are unaware, this is a book about a t little town, uh, which I'm pretty sure is in England, and it is where the uh, the one of the city councilors of that town uh, tragically passes away, and he has, I think, it's a brain aneurysm, and. Uh, the whole town is freaked out by this, and it leaves open the city council position. And so a lot of people are vying for that city council position. And it might be the deciding vote on what happens with uh, this piece of land that is uh, connecting that town to another town. And there are some people who desperately want the town to keep the land, and some people who desperately want the town to get rid of it. And that's the simplified version of the story. There are like over a dozen point of view characters and couples and 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 people to follow in this book it is a huge cast uh of point of view people um not just not just characters that show up like i'm talking people who have their own storyline who are um uh, very much you know it's it's their pov that you're following it's not in first person it's all in third person but still it's their pov that you're following it's a very complex book as opposed to something like harry potter which except for like a handful of chapters is almost entirely from harry potter's perspective and uh so it's an ambitious book for, for Rowling. And it also very much deals with adult themes. This is not, let me repeat, this is not a kid's book. Absolutely, from the get-go, from the first couple of chapters. Uh, I, I felt like uh, J.K. Rowling is actually overcompensating to prove to the audience that she is not trying to write YA or middle grade. I think she's trying to prove that she can be a, quote, serious author. I think she's trying to prove that she can do the adult stuff by writing as much adult stuff as she could, including drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And uh, I am not joking. Those all three things show up in the book. Um, uh, the rock and roll band, that was what surprised me. I was like, I can't believe that you figured out a way to get that in. Anyway, um, uh, so it's a very R-rated book. Um, I mean, it's it's not the most R-rated book I've read, but it's pretty R-rated. It's it's pretty R-rated, uh, somewhat through the language, which there is uh, some some foul language, but mostly through the drugs, the drug usage of the characters and the sexual elements that are in the book. Those are the the pretty uh, R-rated dr driven material in the book. When talking about the writing style, it is really fascinating because this is a mashup of two great authors. This, this, this story, if you were trying to pitch it to someone, you would say it's John Grisham meets Frederick Bachman. John Grisham is the author of these great political thrillers, these great legal thrillers, these great stories that are, you know, uh, that have somber endings, these stories that are very complex and ask di deep, rich questions. And then you also have uh, Frederick Bachman, who is known for writing these deep themes in his books and having huge casts of characters that are all interacting, and you're going to a small town and seeing how that small town is uh, affected by a major event. I mean, this is the this book is the perfect amalgamation of these two authors' writing styles, and I like both of those authors' writing styles. I'm more of a Grisham fan than I am a Bachman fan, but I like both of their books, and so it's interesting to see Rowling try to emulate those uh, writing styles. And it just doesn't work as well. And I'll be up front. I love the Harry Potter books. There's some, I would say my favorite YA uh, series is the, although some people might claim it's middle grade, whatever. Of the middle grade YA, you know, that's my favorite uh, fantasy series. I love it. I love that series. And so I know J.K. Rowling can write amazing stories. And this just, it, it didn't work the way I think Rowling intended. There are some incredible characters in this book. There are some incredible moments in the book. But when you look at the book in its totality, I think it is a very frustrating and annoying book. Um, 
talking about some of the characters, you have the character of K, who is a social worker, and I really liked the character of K. You also have the character of Stuart, who's also known to his friends as Fats, who it annoyed me that they called him Fats, but whatever. I really was intrigued by his character. And then you have the character of um, Crystal Whedon, who is, I think, the most compelling character in the book, the most well-written character in the book, and the most tragic character because of the totality of her story, where she starts, where she goes, where she ends up, the everything that happens to her in life. No matter what happens, everything about her life is tragic. It just Even when she wins, she still loses. And she was just a very compelling character. So as I said... Rowling has some top-tier, compelling characters in this book. There was also a ton of characters, particularly the ones that are running for city council, that were totally not interesting, that I really had a hard time keeping them track of them because she had so many of them, and I was just found myself wanting to go back to these other characters that I mentioned. And uh, I so, so she had some excellent characters that were following and some really poor ones. Had J.K. Rowling narrowed it instead of having like 12 or 15 povs narrowed it down to five maximum i think that this would have been an excellent story one of the other things uh that i think that this book uh fails at is having a good explanation of the political ideals i was able to piece together the political ideals in the book because, you know, it's talking about this piece of land that used to be part of this town and now is part of this town and they're kind of vying for it. And on that land is currently this, um, uh, uh, is, is currently this area called the Fields, where they have this medical facility that is supposed to help people who are in drug rehab. And uh, there is the argument of whether or not that drug rehab facility is worth it, and whether or not the rehab is needed, or whether or not imprisonment is needed. And uh, there's there's so much that goes into the ideals of the politics in this book. Why is that city council position so important? And there was like a chapter or two where she really tried to focus and explain it, but I think J.K. Rowling made it unnecessarily complicated. And I think that what I just gave you should have just been the easy pitch, and instead there's a lot more to it. And compare it with John Grisham and even Frederick Bachman. John Grisham is excellent at distilling an idea down to its simplest. It's still, he still can do complex ideas, but they feel simple. They feel understandable, which is why I think they work so well. Same with Frederick Bachman. He has, this book, Beartown, has some incredibly complex ideas, but they are presented in such a simple to understand way. And when J.K. Rowling tried to simplify it, it just didn't work. It just didn't seem as simple. It still felt complex, uh, which is, I think, the reason that the book just didn't click for me. There's also an element of promises and payoffs in books. Tragic books happen. And books where not everything you want to happen they also that 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 can that can occur where you you want this to happen in a book you want this character to do this action and instead the character goes in an opposite direction and you're heartbroken that's understandable but when you're writing a book like this there needs to be proper payoff to the the character's actions and to me the payoffs we get well, there are payoffs but i do not believe that they are matching the promises that were made at the beginning of the book And I won't tell you for which characters I felt like this was the most egregious use, uh, but there were some characters that I really felt their story was done dirty because Rowling did not give them the proper payoff. And it's not just because uh, it was tragic or not tragic, because uh, I can understand tragedy in books, but it's the way that it was paid off. And I'd have to get into spoilers, which I'm not going to do right now. But uh, if you've gotten to the end of the book, you can probably figure out what I'm referring to. Um, uh, and also there's just traditionally in a, in a book like this, you want to have the straight man who is, and when I say the straight man, I mean the person in literature who is up upright, the person who is, has nothing uh, of, of negativity really about them. A person who is a truly good, moral, genuinely great guy. And if you look at something like Game of Thrones, which every character in Game of Thrones is evil except for one, except for Ned Stark, who is the one moral good character, which is why he's my favorite. This book doesn't really have that. There are arguments you could make. Oh, no, it's actually this person. Maybe the good character is this person. 
Every single character in here, I think, is morally depravable. Um, depravable? Depraved? Every person in here is not a great person. Even the people that are supposed to be sympathetic. Even people like Crystal, who is the most sympathetic character in the book, and the one I connected with the most, she is not portrayed as that, you know, above reproach character that we, you want to have as your protagonist. And so um, because of that, it just it felt like it was lacking that that hopefulness. And, and the whole book was, that was what it was lacking was it was so cynical and cynical books work, but there has to be a healthy dose of hope in a cynical book as well. And this book just didn't have it. So I've spent a lot of time talking about what I didn't like with the book. I also spent some time talking about what I did like. I was able to get through it fairly fast, three days. It was still enjoyable. It was still I think I think it has some great characters and moments, and I think there are some scenes in this book that are just like so expertly written, and some realizations the characters have that I think are just so well done. That being said, I feel meh about the overall book because there were frustrating parts, there were excellent parts, there were boring parts, there were exciting parts. This book was so had such range that it's hard to just pinpoint it and say my overall thoughts on it. So it's a very mixed review. So I'm going to give it like a six out of 10. I still think it is a net positive, especially for the discussions about drugs, the discussions about government, the discussions about the role of rehab as opposed to the role of policing. I think those were all great in the book and handled well. But I do think that this was the weakest J.K. Rowling book I've read by far. And I think that uh, in the hands of another author, like the ones I mentioned, uh, they would have taken this exact same topic and I think done a lot better with it. So that is my review of The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. If you've read the book, did you like it? Did you dislike it? Are you in, are you Do you feel a range of emotions like I do? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.